Hello everyone, this is Roman Bogomazov and we are coming back uh, to our analysis of the Chinese markets uh, using the Wyckoff method. Today with me as usual, Joe Gobbin, and he will be translating. Hey,大家好,我们今天再次跟大家见面,然后探讨中国的股市指数,今天给我担任翻译的人就是我的学生,赵国本先生。uh, today we're going to look at two charts, or rather three charts. The first chart is going to be Shanghai, and the second one is going to be Chenchen Index. Um, I will also bring an S&P 500 chart from the U.S. markets, and we're going to compare the U.S. market to the uh, Shanghai market. Um, and uh, we will try to understand uh, the bias uh, for the Chinese markets, and the comparative strength relative to, let's say, the world market. We also would like to thank all of you who send us emails uh, and uh, uh, Joe Gobbin is uh, replying to some of them. Um, uh, thank you so much for all of the comments, for um, all of the uh, questions that you have. Um, and uh, I think that this summer we're going to work on uh, creating maybe a place where you guys could go uh, sign up to uh, some kind of letter that we might have for you for each of the videos and we'll start developing some material that you could print out and actually uh, have in your hands. So we have a thank,感谢大家给我们发邮件,然后给我们留言,然后呢,国本可能是给部分人,就是发邮件的人回了email,然后呢,我们把你们的要求呢,也都放在一块,将来看看大家怎么让一块解答。另外我们将也正在准备准备一些个地方或者是布罗格或者是网页然后我们给大家准备更多的学习资料希望大家能够耐心等待将来我们跟大家有更多的机会而且呢也让大家能够给我们你们的邮件然后有新的东西出来的时
kind of like the first attempt to stop the price down and then the second attempt to which is successful attempt uh, to stop the price from going down here uh, uh, with the Shanghai uh, it just uh, it's just going down without uh, any attempts to stop hmm. 它和那个上海呢虽然是图像看的有点相似但是它也有很多不同的地方首先第一个不同呢就是二月份它这次下跌的时候我们说它停跌是在二零一七年十二月份十一到十二月份这个这个低点它停跌是在这儿然后有了 而在上证指数呢，它不是，它是在呃，它没有在去年十二月份的低点停留，直接继续向下下跌。So from here we could say that Shanghai index on the way down is weaker. S and P on the way down is comparatively stronger than Shanghai index. 嗯，两个图不一样。Excuse me, go ahead. Uh, hold on a second, let me just finish this. So based on this, we are expecting that the next rally, the automatic rally um, in the Shanghai index is going to be structurally weaker than uh, the same rally um, in, uh, in the S&P. From these two points, the S&P是比较来说, 上证指数它在下跌的过程中, 也就是说它在12月 去年十二月份的时候没有停留，直接下跌。这个来说，它更加弱，比标普五百来说，它就更加弱。从这个弱点来讲，从这个弱项来讲，我们说有可能在上涨的过程中，它会比标普五百的上涨也更弱一些。And look where this rally comes to. It comes to about one half of the move to the downside that we have in the Shanghai. And then the rally in the S and P actually comes into the upper part um, where we actually started the selling. Uh, so again, uh, we are seeing that the S and P comparative uh, uh, to compared to Shanghai index is stronger, and Shanghai is weaker on the automatic rally. 上海上证综指呢，它是上涨到下跌的一半左右。大家看到下跌的一半左右，而在标普五百呢，它已经上到上到这个方位，这个地位是什么呢？是这个大量卖出的这个地方。到这儿来测试，然后到这儿。所以说
不到一千，不到整个下跌的一半大家看没有？这是一半的三分之二左右，不到下，不到整个下跌的一半而且它最近的调整是向下调整，而在标普五百呢，它最近的反弹到了。原本下跌十二，就是二月份下跌的一半左右，而且它最近的调整是横向调整，所以说相对来说标普五百稍微强一些。So what we'd like to figure out is why? Why is this happening? Why one market is stronger over another? And we probably could talk about this from two perspectives. You know, we obviously could talk about the geopolitics. Uh, that's number one, and then the second one is just a technical picture. We first ask why is it this way? Why is the S&P 500 stronger than the Dow Jones Industrial Average? We can explain two reasons. First, the political climate. Second, we can look at the two maps from a technical perspective. Well, obviously, I'm not a big expert on politics、uh, and everything that's going on, but we definitely need to study. You know any type of events that are coming our way. So obviously, the biggest event right now in the relationship between the U.S. and China is the trade talk, and I think that a lot of the institutions, especially that are present in the Chinese market, they just waiting. They are doing nothing. They want to see what kind of resolution the trade talks will have, and then. They will try and take some kind of more meaningful position in the Chinese market. 嗯，罗蒙老师开玩笑啊，他说我对政治不是特别懂。然后呢，我大概也是只是看新闻，看到最近的中美之间在贸易方面产生一些个呃摩擦和对谈。所以说，从中国来讲，大多数中国的这个机构呢，恐怕从图谱上来说，可以看到他们是在等待，他们等待明确的信息出来以后。Um, and then、uh, you know I'll talk about the technical picture in a second, but with the idea that the institutions are waiting for something to resolve, the question that I could ask all of us is, well, what should we do as traders? And I think that we should、uh, definitely have less、uh, of、uh, a trading size. When we trade our positions, and secondly,、um, we should be more selective in our、uh, uh, in our trade. 嗯，那么我们怎么办呢？也就是在机构不是特别活跃的情况下，我们从技术分析的角度讲啊，从在机构不是特别活跃的情况下，我们第一，如果我们还进行交易的话，那么恐怕我们的资金量要少投一点，这是第一个点。给大家建议，第二点呢，就是对股票个股来说更加挑剔一些，挑更强的股票来做。So let's look、um, at this picture also from the technical perspective, which we definitely, as Y Coffins, would like to do. And I would like to point your attention to two areas: area number one and area number two. 那么首先呢，我们还是分析图谱，因为我们是魏科夫，就是看图，来来来看这个图谱怎么样。那么呃，我们呢看两个区域，罗蒙老师画了两个区域，我们观察详细观察一下这两个区域。Uh, the first area, and I'm going to identify this area as an area of absorption,、uh, shows us that. The reason increase in effort, and we see that from the increased volume signature. And please note that both demand and supply is increasing. And usually, it's in these moments when we realize that institutions are present, and they are doing something. So we want to identify their intentions. Their intentions are going to be shown to us on the increase of effort by the result. So the biggest question for us here is what is the result, and we see that the price is making higher highs, higher lows. It's not going down. The spread to the downside is contracting. Even if we have a big spread, there is a quick recovery after that. So the result is,、um, even though the pressure is to the downside, the result is actually positive. 
and therefore this shows um, an area of the absorption and suggests that the price will go further up. 我们首先看这点成交量比较高，我们说好，机构比较活跃，在这里比较活跃。大家要看到这个活跃呢，是有需求增大了，但是供应也增大了，同时供应也增大了。在这里面，然后我们看价格的表现，从量上来说，我们说
它的成交量显著的在减低，所以说机构基本上处于不活跃状态。So let's look into this area in more details. We see that a big move, a violent move with a lot of velocity increase, a lot of spread increase, gaps, some increase in the volume signature, suggesting that this was um, a climactic run. So therefore, uh, the lowest point of that climactic run is going to be identified as a selling climax. Um, that我们看到首先这一段时间是比较拍卖恐慌的抛售高潮我们看到这一段时间它有什么它有速度增加价差增大而且有跳空下跌 The next um, action is to the upside, the rally, the automatic rally. Um, it has the qualities of the change of character relative to the move to the downside. Um, so therefore, uh, it suggests that we are going to be in some kind of trading range. Now, what's interesting about this rally is that it comes from the area where uh, institutions might see some kind of short-term value, and they are buyers relative to where the price has been before. They've seen this as a value just because the price went down so much. Now, those are going to be mistakes made by institutions, and they're going to get rid of their holdings somewhere here. Uh, so that's going to be just a short-term institutional capitulation. So, 出现新高，所以说机构呢，按理说它如果长线角度来说，它在这里犯的是个错误，所以说它在这里面就必须要赶快卖出，所以说这只是一个短期的机构迅速卖出的行为。So we see how institutions are selling on the way up. We see how institutions selling on the way way down. We see how some of them are. Short-term buying on the way up, and then their short-term capitulating, selling again. So therefore, by the time we come into this area right here, into this smaller trading range, institutional activity is very uh, much down. Now we see the institutions in this rise, they are selling, selling, selling. 然后呢在下跌的时候他又在卖出跌到这个位置的时候他认为是超跌然后他开始抄底反弹部分机构咱们就说不是大部分机构了是部分机构超跌的时候他开始抄底抄底完以后到这里然后呢是这些个短期的这
造成的压力阻力点、阻力或者是阻力区。Okay. Um, let's look at the price structure. So after the selling climax, we would experience a change of character rally, which is an automatic rally. We will we are having kind of like higher test, secondary test that concludes our phase A. Now we are in phase B. Now phase B has an interesting structure by itself because it has its own trading range. And in this trading range, a principle within the principle, a trading range within the trading range, we are experiencing the same type of price actions. A selling climax, which is associated with the initial uh, acceleration of the price to the downside, stop in action, a uh, couple of local tests, um, automatic rally, um, local, and then more pronounced uh, up thrust in phase B, uh, sign of weakness in phase B. And then what we consider maybe a potential up thrust attempt in phase C. If that's the case, the price probably should go and re at least revisit this area right here. 那么这个价格上的表现和魏科夫他阶段分析，然后我们看到这里面这个抛售高潮，抛售高潮以后呢，到这来自动上涨，特性改变，也就是说这个抛售高潮这一段被止住了，下跌被止住了，然后呢，在
弱势弱势出现情况，弱势比较弱的情况。第二种情况呢，就有可能它还在这个阶段 B 的这个交易区间内震荡，也就是说到底拉起来，然后再往下走，先震荡一段时间。但是如果说最近的呃贸易呃谈判如果出现了好消息，那有可能也会反转，那么就希望说这方有一个比较大的阳线，立刻拉起来。那么，即使有很好的消息的话，由于前期的压力点很压力很大，那么，呃，有可能的话也是测试一下前期的阻力，在这儿开始进行盘整。所以说，这个现在，呃，地缘政治的或者是贸易谈判很难预测结果到底是怎么样。所以说，我们只能是，呃，呃，等待观察，而且。而且说最大的可能性恐怕还是在这个区域内震荡。All right, now let's look at the Shenzhen, and the structure here is slightly different. 嗯，那么看一下成指，深圳成指，这样的话呢，和上证指数有一点点不一样。We see that uh the distribution has taken place around this area and also on the way down. 我们看这个派发呢，它比较早，它在二零一七年的年末的时候就开始派发了。然后呢，而且派发在这个二零一八年二月份，全球都开，就是这上证指数在下跌的时候，它正好派发也开始派发。And then this area right here, uh, for us to identify this as a failure of the price to continue to the upside, we could see. Uh, maybe three or four signs indicating that this is a distribution. 嗯，这个区域呢，我们是说它它上涨失败，也就是向上拉升失败。所以从几个点来说，我们看看一看它的特性。The first one is going to be just a break of the trend. Whenever we are breaking the trend, that usually is going to happen on the change of character, and we could observe that. The change of character indeed is happening. Um, this reaction is the largest reaction that we have seen on the way up. Uh, so therefore, it's a true change of character, and that suggests that at the minimum we're going to be in the trading range. 嗯，首先我们看看这个这个区域，这个区域它什么？它出现了一个什么？它跌破了这个向上的趋势线。跌破向上趋势线的时候，经常如果它继续下跌的话，经常会造成一个特性改变。那么特性改变的出现，就是说，有可能预示着我们有可能将要出现一个交易区间。Number two is that after the initial rally of the low of the automatic reaction after the buying climax, we see that the price still making a lower low, creating a sign of weakness in phase B. Which is inherently also a sign of inability、um, of the demand to sustain the prices at the higher level, and we kind of see that supply is going down, yet the result to the downside is increasing, which becomes somewhat long-term bearish, suggesting that demand is of poor quality, and yet short-term bullish. As supply diminishes, suggesting that there's going to be some kind of short-term rally, and we have this rally into the highs of the previous resistance. 嗯，我们看这段时间的价格变化，这里面呢是购买高潮，抢购狂，抢购高潮，高潮完以后，正好形成了自动下跌，所以说跌破了趋势线。跌破趋势线以后，它有个二次测试，测试前面会不会我们还有更多的需求能够突破前高。这里面没有，所以说它叫二次测试。二次测试完以后，它这次的时候下跌到 face 到阶段 B， 阶段 B 的时候出现了一个什么？出现了一个继续下跌，它在前底的时候没有止住，继续下跌，跌到这里了。所以说，我们说这是在阶段 B 的弱势信号，它产生了一个底比前底低的情况。这个说明什么？说明在长期来讲，长期的这个呃呃趋势来讲。我们认为它是比较熊市，比较熊的意味。然后，但是呢，看它的成交量，它的成交量在
，下跌的整个过程呢，它又是逐渐减低的。所以说从，从如果是成交量减低，就说明供应比较少，供应逐渐减少。从这个供应比较减少，我们说短期来说，它有比较牛的意味，也就是它如果供应没有了，短期来说会拉升。所以说，大家看这个短期它确实是拉升了，但对长期来讲，因为你在它的需求比较少，需求在减低，长期来讲它比较它是熊的意味。And this is where a lot of like of students make a lot of mistakes, and not just like of students,、uh, you know, different type of traders. It's the understanding that we have to look into the different time frames, and on the different time frames, we could have different bias, and that's why this type of analysis is a little bit counterintuitive. 罗蒙老师说，这一点来说，从短期来讲，从长期来讲，这个两个分析出现两个结果的时候。这是很多魏科夫的学生感到迷茫的地方。确实，他有点像什么？他有点像和我们的直觉相抵触，和直觉觉得不太一样。The change of character shows that the long-term bias is to the downside. Yet this area right here, the short-term decrease in the supply and an ability of the price to go further down, creating the higher low. Suggests that the short-term bias is bullish, and we could expect a rally. 那么这个看，大家如果看这段就是特性改变的这段，改变的这么大的话，从长期来讲，我们认为它是熊的意味比较浓厚，它有可能是向下的，也就是方向是向下的。但从短期来讲，因为这段下降的时候，它供应量逐渐减低，而且它出现了一个底比底高，这里面出现了一个底比底高，所以从短期来讲。我们认为它会有一波的上上的反弹或者拉升，从短期来讲。So we are going into the third indication that we are in under the institutional distribution. We are looking at the rally, and with the rally, what we'd like to see is、uh, ability of the rally to overcome the previous levels of the resistance. And unfortunately, here with the rally, the rally fails to do so. And it fails to do so on a slightly increased effort signature. So we have an increase in effort, decrease in the result. We are trying to push the price up above the resistance, and yet we are failing. So therefore, that becomes a bearish indication, and we could expect a reaction. And because we didn't overcome the resistance, we would be thinking that we are either in phase C or phase B, and、uh, therefore. The move to the downside could be somewhat aggressive. 嗯，然后我们看这一段的情况，这段情况有一个什么特点？有一个成交量它比较高，甚至来说比这里面的成交量要么相似，要么甚至来说它还要多一点。但是看它的结果呢？按理说，如果这行我们期望它是要么平齐和前高平齐，要么是稍微高一点最好。但是呢？有这么大的努力，也就这么高的成交量向上的阳线的成交量，却没有创出新高，也就是它的结果缩减了。所以说，正好是努力增加，结果减少。这个什么说明什么？说明有熊的意味比较浓厚。如果在这块没有增加的时候，如果反转的话，我们可能预测，那么反转会大一些。The last indication of the distribution in this area is just the beginning of this move. The spread is increasing. The volume signature is still relatively high, so that tells us that those are still、uh, elements of institutional distribution on the way down, and、uh, we could expect some kind of continuation. 嗯，另外一个，我们看他说他比说这个机构在下跌的时候进行派发，看什么呢？看他的这个阴线阴线的情况。第一呢，价差比较大。而且呢，出现了一些个跳空，然后另外看阴线的量也比前增高，所以说我们说庄就是这个机构在下跌的时候有派发。So let's go through this quickly again. Number one, a break of the trend. Number two, a, a significant change of character. Number three, uh. Contraction decrease of the result to the upside, inability of the rally to、uh, commit above the resistance. Number four, 
the quality of the reaction that unfolds on the relatively present institutional supply. All of those elements in this area are indicating to us that there is a distribution on the way. Okay, we'll look at it again. 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 特性改变的时候，改变的比较大，大家看到下降降的比较大。第三点是这么大的量成交量，这个上升却没有突破前面的阻力线，甚至没有达到前面的阻力线。第四个就是在下跌的时候，这个下跌的比较快，而且成交下跌的阴线的，呃，那供应量比较大。And after that, we have a major sign of weakness. That goes、um, into the oversold condition, that produces again some kind of short-term value、uh, for weak institutional hands, and、uh, they are buyers、uh, at this point, and this is what produces this rally. The rally actually comes really nicely into one half of the range,、um, but yet encounters the resistance. Of, uh, on the, of, of the trend channel, and then just falls again with the qualities of the supply coming back again. So there is some kind of institutional capitulation that we see here,、um, and that capitulation is late institutional capitulation. Hmm. We look at this part, and then in this part, the market is down. When it falls at this point, it shows a weakening signal. This weakening signal, because many institutions 一些机构认为，哎，这里面已经超跌了，这里面有价值，所以说他们在在超跌以后强反弹，强短期反弹，短期反弹以后呢，它反弹的其实程度很不错，反弹到前期的这个下跌，整个下跌的大概 ，let me see， 四分之三左右，到了这行以后，这里面大家看到出现的还是大量的供应，相对来说这出现大量供应，大量供应出现以后，它这属于上升困难。然后继续下跌，在这块，到这跌到这儿的时候，这些个强反弹的机构就开始大量卖出了。所以你看到这些线，供应线非常，这成交量非常大。And then after that, again, as we've seen with Shanghai,、uh, we don't have a lot of institutional participation. That's number one.、Uh, volume in general is going down. And we don't have the lift of the rallies,、um, and that suggests some kind of weakness and continuation to the downside. And we see how, off this area of the resistance, the price actually reverses really quick、um, and、uh, heads down.、Uh, so I would be expecting, you know, a retest of this area right here.、Uh, this is where the price, you know, seems to gravitate right now. And until we see. The signs of intelligent accumulation by big hands. We should be extremely cautious with all of our trades. We should be extremely selective with all our trades, and obviously we should be paying a lot to the trade talks、uh, between the U.S. and China, because if the positive news comes, we could have a really big push to the upside,、uh, and it could be very short-term lived. And if we don't have A lot of great news. Then, most likely, the price is either going to consolidate or even go down. 嗯，大家看这一段时间的价格和成交量变化。首先呢，成交量是减低了。成交量减低代表机构在这一段不活跃。第二点呢，就是看这张反弹，它的反弹的的距离越来越小，就是这样比距离越小。第三是它服从这个压力线。如果你做一个压力线的话，哎，它到到这上以后，刚一碰到压力线就开始往下落。所以说从这一点来看，那么有可能这个价格还会回落或者测试这个这个底部，甚至这个区域。所以说在最近来说呢，就是中美贸易正在会谈，而且呢，这个由于这个贸易战的或者咱们说那贸易摩擦的问题吧，如果大家做多的话，那么尽量。就是挑非常强的股票，或者是处于位置非常好的股票来做，呃，这这这段时间的这个不确定性非常大。我们呢，呃，也要看到很多时常关心这个
呃新闻和局势，如果是好的消息出来了，或者好的政策出来了，机构介入的可能性，突然介入的可能性也会有。我们看到这些个机构介入的想的信号，有可能就是一个大阳线，一个伴随很高的成交量。Uh, another cool tool here that you could use is um, a measurement, one-to-one -one measurement. So you want to take the initial move to the downside and try to uh, project that from the high, from where it might uh, originate next time. And this one-to-one -one move usually will fall into some area of the support uh, either a short-term support or a long-term support. And whenever I see this type of um, uh, areas where multiple long-term and short-term support areas coincide with the target objectives uh, based on the bias, which is short-term is to the downside, it makes a lot of uh, sense to me. So I would be expecting that maybe we could potentially have a lower low, especially if the US market a little bit, you know, uh, uh, stalls. And then if the Chinese market just continue uh, a waiting period to see what kind of uh, resolution on the trade talks we're going to have. Mm. Uh, 会在哪儿呢？那么有两个，有几个办法。第一个呢，就是非常传统的，大家呃，这测量一下前期下跌有多大，那么这次下跌有可能还会有多大，就是基本相似的,的这个一比一的下跌。所以说，我们从这上量一下，这是上次下跌的距离，那么这次呢，有可能会相似一比一到这儿。另外呢，就是看这个呃阻力线呃支撑线，这个支撑线这块有可能出现一次支撑。然后呢，前面有两次有可能出现支撑。当我们看到这个一比一的下跌到这个位置，这上有一次支撑，这有一次支撑，多次支撑，在这个纵，还有在这个，这上有一个也是个向下斜向下的支撑线，都做到这点的时候，我们说，如果美国的股市也比较弱，在那块呃盘旋不动的话，那么中国咱们上证和深圳呢，有可能继续下跌的话。那么这个位置是非常有可能止跌的位置，这样的话虽然是比过去产生了一个 low 底比底低的情况，但是这两个支撑可能会把这个价格的目标定在这个附近。All right, well that's it for today, guys.、Uh, thank you for listening to this recording. Hopefully,、um, you're getting some new ideas.、Um, uh you know from this recordings i'm trying to concentrate on the main basic ideas and to show those on the chart hopefully it's uh clear for you how the principles work what we should be concentrating on and um you know it's all about uh, uh identification of the institutional presence um and you can base your trading on that as i mentioned um and please note that the next video uh, is probably going to come out uh, in two weeks' time. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask you to be patient with us, and we'll come back to you with the new material in two weeks. Thank you so much, and bye-bye. 好，今天就谈到这里。然后呢，呃，罗木老师说，希望这个视频对大家有帮助，而且呢，他也正呃在做一些个比较基础知识的视频，这样有助于更多的。同学来进行理解，因为他知道有很多同学现在的呃，就是就是呃，现在那个同学听众啊，很多人水平已经很高了，但是很多这个水平就是在初级的同学呢，可能他还听不懂，所以说呢，他做一些个资料，希望能够让呃呃水平稍稍刚入门的学生也能够看懂和听懂。嗯、呃，还有再次提醒大家，我们。呃，下一个视频恐怕在两周以后，所以请大家耐心等待。希望大家交易顺利。好，谢谢大家。